it's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor um, to be able to tell you about our work on cardiac optogenetics. Um, to understand the complex biological process, we typically require tools to be able to perturb it, uh, actuators, and to be able to observe it, sensors. Ideally, in order to really understand it, we want to be able to control it. For the field of cardiac electrophysiology, which is that branch of cardiology which deals with electrical activity of the heart and electrical instabilities such as arrhythmias, a breakthrough development was the voltage clamp technique where such feedback control was implemented to be able to really understand the electrical function of heart cells at the cellular level. Unfortunately, that technique is not easily translatable to the multicellular or, or tissue level, and electrical activity at the tissue level tends to be um, complex, as illustrated here, this is an old experimental recording from my lab, uh, an electrical reentrant wave in heart tissue uh, that keeps rotating. Uh, so it's very complex at the multicellular level, and to be able to control uh, such activity, we need actuators and cells, sensors that are spatially distributed and that are robust, that uh, gives us the option to uh, provide any input function uh, over time and to be able to distribute the signal over space. The idea that optical means can be used as such actuators and sensors has been around for a couple of decades uh, this is a depiction uh, from Giro Misen books, um, a review in Science 2009. Um, in other words, the idea that all optical control of biological function can be implemented has been around. Um, from my field, we are most interested in um, being able to control electrical function in cardiac tissue. Um, optical actuators, of biological origin were discovered around 2002 that were simple enough to be able to put them in mammalian cells, in, in cardiac cells, and achieve very fine um, optical control. So the way they work is their, um, their uh, light-sensitive proteins that come from lower organisms and they convert the energy of a photon into ion flux, and therefore they are able to change the membrane voltage of a cell at the millisecond time scale. So they're fast uh, optogenetic actuators. Combining this with the optical means that have been around for um, 30 or so years, um, the fluorescent uh, sensors, would allow one to go and think in terms of all optical control of electrical function in the heart. In other words, ability to um, perturb, control uh, thousands and millions of uh, cardiac cells independently, uh, in parallel, or to even control uh, electrical waves in the heart. So, when we started in this area, in parallel, we developed experimental tools to uh, uh, sensitize uh, cardiac cells and cardiac tissue to light, as well as biophysical models in order to really understand how these uh, light-sensitive proteins work in the heart. And shown is a validation, um, sorry, a validation of, uh, of this side-by-side uh, -side optically triggered action potential in a cardiac cell and experimentally and uh, how the model behaves. Then we can incorporate these models at the tissue scale and predict how it will actually work. So the applications in the cardiac area are numerous, but tonight I only have time to talk about two of them. The first one being 
how to use these tools to achieve high throughput all optical electrophysiology. And uh, we perceive this particular application of optogenetics in the cardiac field as the most immediately translational. Uh, Dr. Kontak mentioned that translational could be something that doesn't necessarily go in humans, and that's how we view this application. Um, so the, the areas that would benefit from means to provide high-throughput view of cardiac electrophysiology are the drug discovery, cardiotoxicity uh, testing, and um, functional characterization of patient-derived, stem cell-derived cardiomyocytes, so patient-specific therapies. So we realized such a system that we named OptoDice. It's an all-optical system for dynamic cardiac electrophysiology that is fully automated. Uh, we start from human patient cells, skin cells or blood cells, that using stem cell technology, we differentiate into cardiomyocytes, and then we can build um, heart micro-tissues that are specific for that patient. We sensitize the cells by directly introducing uh, optogenetic tools in the myocytes or by um, what we call spark cells, which are uh, dedicated light-sensitive cells that are not necessarily myocytes to build a biophotonic device at the tissue level. The actual optical system to implement this all optical high throughput uh, um, uh, testing system is quite simple. Uh, we don't even use lasers here. Um, we have multiple light emitting diodes uh, that are spectrally uh, combined so that we use blue light for the stimulation, for providing a stimulation protocol. We use other wavelengths, here depicted green and red, to simultaneously record multiple variables. We record uh, fast variables such as uh, membrane potential, shown here um, from this human stem cell-derived car cardiomyocytes, and simultaneously calcium. We are strobing the LEDs so that a single detector can uh, uh, collect the different variables. So the system is uh, fast and is fully automated. The key point is that it's the first system to be able to achieve, to meet the high throughput um, standard uh, that industry, uh, pharmaceutical industry sets. Um, and that standard is to be able to test 10,000 compounds per day. Uh, we are an academic lab, we don't really do that many compounds a day, but the system has the potential to actually do it. Um, what is important is that being optical, this approach can work with um, single cells, layers of cells, and small 3D structures, uh, including uh, micro-grooved uh, micro-tissues up to 300 microns or so. Uh, using the system, we can demonstrate that dynamic over time testing of uh, response to a drug, for example, can be done. Um, it has a very high content information, simultaneously recording from uh, thousands of cells, uh, all these variables um, at the same time, uh, voltage, calcium, contractility. And, um, it can provide the means to do very fast, um, detailed dose response testing as shown with this particular antiarrhythmic drug, nifedipine. The system provides also spatial information. It can uh, provide us with the means to quantify spatial coherence uh, uh, in the response to a, to a drug. This is an example with a drug that was pulled from phase three clinical trial uh, in December 2015 because other methods failed to see that this uh, arrhythm, uh, is proarrhythmic. Um, just visually, 
it's very reminiscent to the response of um, a classic proarrhythmic drug that was pulled from the market in 2004, Dufetilide. So our system provides a very comprehensive look um, at, at this kind of um, uh, responses. I have little time left, but this is an interesting one. Wave steering, for this community, I have to differentiate um, control of optical waves uh, from control of cardiac waves that I'm talking about. So we um, devised a method to control electrical waves in the heart. And this is the movie I would like to show, which is a cardiac electrical wave that is being perturbed by dynamically changing optical pattern. So it's the one example that really captures the power of this all optical control. So we are, again, recording this uh, details. Uh, it's a die-free recording in this case. And we are using digital micromirror device to project a pattern to manipulate the wave, to change the chirality of the wave. Um, we have shown that we can control the speed of waves, their direction, their chirality, which provides a completely fundamentally new means to uh, uh, anti-arrhythmic uh, arrhythmia control, which have not been available uh, without these optical tools. So um, I will rush to the acknowledgement slide, um, particularly my collaborator, Dr. Gil Bupp, uh, who has moved now to uh, McGill. Thank you.